everyone so i'm currently in the city of naples italy and right behind me is mount vesuvius ah. so mount vesuvius is a shadow volcano and it's known for the eruption in 79 a.d that buried the entire roman city of pompeii in volcanic ash and debris but that wasn't the first eruption that happened at mount vesuvius or the volcano right underneath it which is called mount soma so, Mount Soma, which you see here at the base, began erupting at around 25,000 years ago, and it was active until around 17,000 years ago when a major eruption blew off the top of the volcano, leaving behind the rim that you see right here. And after that major eruption, a new volcano, Mount Vesuvius, which we all know, started to build itself up into how we see it today. So, Mount Vesuvius is still considered to be an active volcano, even though the last time it erupted was way back in 1944. And coincidentally, that last eruption was during World War II. And the U.S. Air Force actually had an air base right next to Mount Vesuvius. And during that 1944 eruption, about $25 million worth of aircraft got destroyed. So now on to the geology of Mount Vesuvius and why this area is so volcanically active. So if we look at a map of Italy, there's a subduction zone right along this line, where this plate is currently going underneath this plate right here. And usually when an oceanic plate is going underneath a continental plate, as in this case, you get a volcanic arc that pops up on the upper plate because water gets released from the subducting plate and this causes magma to melt and rise up to the surface. This type of situation formed the Aeolian Arc that we see here. And even though Mount Vesuvius formed here, relatively close to the main subduction zone, it didn't form in the traditional sense that the Aeolian Arc formed. Instead, scientists noticed that the subducting plate was actually made up of oceanic and continental crust. And since these different crusts have different densities, they began sinking at different rates. And this caused the plate to tear right around here, which allowed magma to rise super high up into the asthenosphere where it camped out right below the surface. Now at the same time all of this was happening, the area around Naples and actually all this area back here was stretching and thinning because the subduction zone was actually shifting. And as this area was stretching and thinning, cracks were forming all around here. And right at the Campanian Plain region, which is where Mount Vesuvius and Campi Flegri exist, there are a few major cracks, which has allowed magma to flow up until it could erupt at the surface. Okay, so now that we have that geologic context of how Mount Vesuvius came to be, now we're going to go look at the ruins of Pompeii, and we're also going to have a tour guide give a little bit more context of the history and the important stuff that were left behind. All right, let's go. So this is Dario and he will be our local guide from the city of Naples and he will begin by talking about the walls of Pompeii and what they're actually constructed out of. Of course, archaeologically speaking, Pompeii is a treasure chest, of course, but it's not about like broken buildings, it's about life. And now let's spend just a couple of words about broken buildings, I mean, like, you see these big blocks okay, wrapped in a wall. This is what I meant about recycling. The big blocks you see are Greek blocks of 2,600 days ago, wrapped in a Roman wall made of cement, bricks and stones of 2,000 years ago. Okay, so this is what I meant about recycling. You see limestones. I mean, they were using local stones, of course. Allora, um, the, the Bay of Naples. Why it's such a beautiful place, no? Because of Napolitans, of course not. <laughs> I mean, like because it's the perfect match between two different areas. We have a volcanic one mm. and mountains into the ocean. You see in the distance, the landscape, no, the mountains. It's what we call Peninsula of Sorrento. Mountains made of limestones. So mountains into the ocean, the Southern Alps. Okay, the island of Capri, the same. It's a rock in the middle of the ocean. So we have Tufa stone, uh all the wide range but basalt of the volcanic stones. Hi, Rocky the Rockhound here, 
So as Dario mentioned, the residents at Pompeii used locally sourced volcanic rocks to build the walls of their buildings. And it's important to note that the volcanic rocks were from previous eruptions at Mount Soma, and Mount Vesuvius. Some people may say that these rocks are basalt, but as Dario said, that's not true because basalt is found in places like Hawaii and mid-ocean ridges. In this region, the magma is different because it's been mixed with the plate that got subducted, and it has to travel through quite a bit of limestone and other rock before it can erupt at the surface, and as it's traveling through all this host rock, it's mixing and turning into a different flavor of magma, and then erupting as trachyte, tephrite, or phonolite in this region. So, different volcanic situations form different volcanic rocks. Okay, back to the tour now. So we have tufa stone, trachyte, uh, all the wide range but basalt of the volcanic stones, and limestones. No well, more, the Romans had the cement. And so they were uh, recycling. I mean, why you see roughly a Roman wall anyway, for example, bricks, stones. This is about Roman engineering. What I mean? Uh, our cement still today is not good uh, in terms of compression. It's not too good in terms of compression. The reason why we are putting in our cement today rebars and enforcements, okay? Because it's not good in terms of compression. So the Roman rebars were the bricks. Now, a brick uh, was cheap, but a stone was cheaper. A stone was a strong, but a brick was much stronger. Okay, so if they were in need of strength, generally you see the bricks. If they were not in need of strength, you see the stones. But at the end of it, everything you see was plastered over. We have just the skeleton of it. And so we see the engineering, should you say, not what they did. But we're using local stones. My left hand side, on your right, though, I the, the sauna in two sections for the ladies and for the gentlemen. You see why it's such a good state of preservation because of the archy roof. Being the archy never collapsed because better, much better supported the big wave was right above it for so long. By the chance, you see the Italian white marble pavimenting and decorating the floor you see local cheap charming elegant but the cheapest possible on the walls you see a lot of frescoes a fresco was expensive stuff because it was made what with white paint white paint it's a limestone powder melted up with crushed mineral and egg whites for adhesive and it had good skills that had good skills to do these so expensive Right, but you see on the cheapest colors possible, I mean, locally speaking, of course, because the red, it's Sinabar, volcanic, local, not cheap, mineral. The uh, bright yellow, carbon oxide melted up with sulfur, Ramosine, volcanic, local, cheap. So the cheapest colors possible, fresco colors possible, on. Ceiling, on, you see, a stack of work. A stack of work was beautiful, but it was much cheaper than a fresco. So beautiful, but cheap, okay? In the building back, you see seats and a bench front in to wait around. This was a waiting room for the clients. We were sitting and waiting, getting into the bath. But in the middle, on your left, you see some cabins. You see those cabins? Very good. Those were lockers made of wood, wood gun. But in other words, they were locking the personal belongings. Who knows? Sunglasses, iPads, tablets, whatever. And getting into the bath. The path on your left, the two spotlights you see, the first on your left digs was the cold bath, called the frigidarium, the cold one, the two in the back, the tiepidarium, tiepid worm, and the calidarium, the hot one, because of central radiant heat technology. Wow, stuff, uh, mind blowing stuff. It's cool, eh? Wow. Everything you see. The <laughs> So let me point you out just a couple of important buildings, okay? By the chance you see a statue in between the columns in front of you, 
you see Jupiter, so the temple of Jupiter, as well known as the Capitolium. Well, it reminds me of a Capitol Hill in the United States, right? The Capitol building, in other words. You see in the corner, on your right hand side, the four arches, correct? Guys, let me ask you, how many banks today, nowadays, are still having arches on? Plenty of banks in the world. That one was the Roman sign to say bank and was called the Erarium, the place where gathering taxes and changing coins. So it's sort of primordial bank. And personally, I'm still wondering why the closest building to the local church was a bank. <laughs> Jupiter got a duty. Jupiter got a duty to protect the money first. But does it mean the Romans were negotiating with Jupiter too? In front of the bank, on your left, was the granary. So, food, religion, money. The pillar itself of the local economy and society. Side of the bank, the walled building you see, was the public market called the Macellum. In other words, it was like, hey, you, get your money into the bank and let's spend your money into the market without strolling around too much. Eh? Hey, alimenting the local economy, of course. Which pizza you like the most? Margherita, capricciosa, yeah, marinara, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, If you like to get one of these brick pizza oven today, yeah, nowadays in your courtyards, um, you can spend money for it. Yeah, easy, it easy. It costs uh, 16, yeah. 17,000 US dollars for one like this, okay? Comparing the economy, this stuff was much more expensive 2,000 years ago. So the owner spent a fortune for this. Why he did? But because of money, B2B, good business. How to get the good the real Italian pizza dough? Crispy outside, the soft, the humid, and delicious within thin a piece of bread. All you need is this. Because it's gotta be 900 Fahrenheit within, no longer within, 90 seconds. Now, in 90 seconds, guys, you can tell you're standing in front of the oldest fast food ever. Like boom, 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 quick pizza, good pizza. I mean, good, quick business, good business. That's it, money, money, money. Goods here, like this in Pompeii, are 47. So we can easily estimate daily production of pizza, bread, and cheap bread a day in Pompeii. Easy, easy, up to 35,000 a day on a population of 20,000. What does it mean? They used to feed ordinary people with a lot of cheap cups and drinking a lot of cheap wine and entertaining them with a lot of cheap entertainments. Bread and circus. And let me tell you, it still works. Alright, hey everybody. <laughs> this is what's happening. My eyelash, I got cut. <laughs>